Mr. President, I have the honor to address the special meeting of the General Assembly convened to mark the beginning of the 1993 International Year for the World's Indigenous People on behalf of my government, the Sovereign Democratic Republic of Fiji. As a member of an Indigenous population myself, speaking today is a special personal honour. Mr. President, we in Fiji welcome the decision by the United Nations to mark 1993 as the International Year for the World's Indigenous People. It is our hope that the year will help to draw international attention to the situation of Indigenous peoples and highlight the unique contribution which they have made and continue to make to global, social and economic developments. It will help us evaluate initiatives already taken to assist Indigenous peoples and most importantly to reassess our programs in support of Indigenous peoples. Fiji's Prime Minister, Honourable Major General Sitiveni Rambuka, at this year's General Assembly on October 8, expressed sincere and deep appreciation for the commendable efforts of the Working Group on Indigenous People in drafting the Universal Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. In addition, he expressed our government's support for the Declaration of 1993 as the International Year for the World's Indigenous People. My presence here on this historical and special occasion is continuing affirmation of the significance with which Fiji holds Indigenous rights and interests. The theme for the year, Indigenous Peoples, a new partnership, has been appropriately selected. This will, we believe, certainly help provide a much needed framework within which the new relationships between states and indigenous peoples and among the international community can be developed. This new partnership must, however, be based on mutual respect and understanding if the process of dialogue and consultations with one another is to be meaningful and effective. Indigenous peoples are among the neglected and most vulnerable people in the world. They are people whose rights have not always been adequately recognized, their cultures have been ignored, and their development has been hampered. They are among the world's poorest people and have equally often been alienated from the decision-making process in their own lands. In this regard, my government fully supports the stated objectives of the year. Most fundamental among those are the need to ensure the fullest participation of, it, of the indigenous people in decisions affecting their development the need to provide adequate funding for projects of direct benefit to the indigenous people, and the need to improve their knowledge and awareness of their own rights and responsibilities. The fulfillment of these objectives requires a common and concerted effort by the wider international community. In order to especially ensure the greatest possible involvement of indigenous people in the planning, implementation, and evaluation of programs and projects affecting their living conditions, 
there will be a need to examine appropriate mechanisms by which consultations on these matters could be improved. The program of activities and projects for the year carries our full support. It clearly demonstrates the need for a well-established infrastructure for furthering the objectives of the year at both national and international levels. At the national level, we must establish national commi committees to prepare a national program of activities, raise public awareness and encourage the fullest participation of indigenous peoples in all activities undertaken in connection with the year. From the United Nations system, we will be looking forward to the funding of concrete projects for the indigenous peoples, as, env as envisaged in the program of activities we feel that the organization of an international trade fair of goods produced by the indigenous peoples is an excellent idea. And we wish to see that pre preparatory work on this trade fair begins as early as possible. Mr. President, the year will be an occasion to highlight the uniqueness of indigenous cultures and the value of those cultures in the present world. The indigenous people have developed techniques and skills which have allowed them to survive and flourish in some of the most fragile ecosystems. And this they have managed without causing serious depletion of resources or damage to the environment. In particular, indigenous peoples have knowledge of plants which are suitable as medicines and to this day, traditional medicine continues to be a useful source of Western pharmacology. As noted by the World Commission on Environment and Development, tribal and indigenous peoples' lifestyles can offer modern society men, many lessons in the management of complex forest, mountain, and dry land ecosystems. The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, UNSAID, convened in June this year, supported Principle 22 in the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. This states that indigenous peoples and their communities and other local communities have a vital role in environmental management and development because of their knowledge and traditional practices. States should recognize and duly support their identity, culture and interests and enable their effective participation in the achievement of sustainable development. Another important document adopted at UNSED, Agenda 21, devotes a separate chapter to strengthening the role of indigenous peoples in the establishment of arrangements to foster active participation of indigenous peoples in the formulation of national policies, laws and programs relating to resource management and other development processes that may affect them. Furthermore, the indigenous peoples have contributed, contributed significantly to the arts, sciences, technology and other areas of human knowledge and endeavor. But there is little recognition of the contribution of indigenous cultures through their music, arts and craft to the work of non-indigenous artists and thinkers, nor is there full and proper recognition of their knowledge of a wide variety of plants, 
for food, medicine and other purposes I mentioned earlier. While it may be appropriate to recognize the historical debt of the modern society to the knowledge and discoveries of the indigenous peoples, we must also consider ways and means of protecting and compensating the present day knowledge of indigenous peoples. As a very minimum, indigenous knowledge has and will continue to give vital clues to scientists thereby saving them expensive research and development time. We are aware that this subject has been discussed at several seminars organized under the broad heading of international property rights, and we hope that something useful will eventuate from them. Mr. President, we in Fiji hope for concrete results from this year. The Working Group on Indigenous Population must continue to provide an open forum for discussion, cooperation and dialogue among Indigenous peoples, states and non-governmental organizations. <clears throat> it has an important mandate to review developments in the promotion and protection of the human rights of the Indigenous peoples and give special attention to the evolution of standards. It would be highly fitting if work on, that, on the draft Universal Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples were to conclude during 1993. We welcome the new principles that have been adopted with respect to the fundamental rights of the Indigenous Peoples. For example, Article 30 of the newly adopted International Labour Organization Convention on Indigenous and Tribal Peoples refers to Indigenous Peoples' rights to be fully informed about their rights and duties in their own languages. It also refers to the Indigenous Peoples' rights to participate in and to take control of their own development. The Convention further calls for the consolidation and strengthening of Indigenous societies and their cultures and traditions through control over development affecting them and their territories. These are to be based on their own needs and value systems and comprehensive participation in all other relevant development activities within and among states. We wish to also underscore here the Convention's recognition of the collective and individual rights to maintain and develop their ethnic and cultural characteristics and identities, including the rights of peoples and individuals to respect for their self-identification. These rights include also the right of each indigenous people to pursue its own cultural, political and economic development. Mr. President, I now wish to allude briefly to my country, Fiji. Allow me to shed some light on the situation regarding the indigenous population in Fiji and which in the recent past has attracted some attention both locally and overseas. The indigenous people in Fiji as at 1991 was estimated to number 366,000 out of an estimated total population of 750,000, less than half of the population. The new constitution of Fiji adopted on 25th July 1990, however, gives the indigenous Fijians a majority of seats in the House of Representatives in order to guarantee, protect and promote their special indigenous position. 
It also contains entrenched provisions in relation to native land and Fijian affairs. The Constitution recognizes the Great Council of Chiefs, also known as the Mbose Lebu Wakaturanga, as an important institution in the social, political, and economic life of the Tokini, Toke Nibanua, the Fijian people. This recognition is in line with the historical role of the Great Council of Chiefs in guiding the destiny of Fijians. The Great Council of Chiefs derives its authority from the status of its members associated with their chiefly lineage. As a consequence, our new constitution formally recognizes the, council, the Great Council of Chiefs and has vested in it a number of important functions. In addition to appointing the president for a five-year term, this chiefly institution selects 24 Fijians for appointment as senators to the 34 member Senate. The Fijian majority in the Senate is to ensure the protection of Fijian interests, their customs, land and traditions. In addition to the concern for the Fijian people, our constitution is guided by the protective provisions in the constitutions of several other member countries of the United Nations and the recognition that these countries give to the special rights of the indigenous people in their countries. The international community's growing awareness of and sympathy for the cause of indigenous groups was a source of added inspiration. The Constitution also takes account of the 1989 Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention adopted by the International Labour Organization and which I mentioned earlier on. It should also be pointed out that our Constitution was formulated by an independent multiracial commission of prominent individuals who visited all parts of the country, who were guided by the views and opinions of the people and whose report and recommendations after months of study and deliberations were unanimous. The constitution does not disenfranchise any non-Fijians nor does it deprive them of their rights. As a matter of fact, the Constitution places great emphasis on fundamental rights, freedoms and representation. An elaborate Bill of Rights was formulated in 1990 and made part of the Constitution. The individual rights conform to all major United Nations instruments relating to human rights, protection among the rights is specifically guaranteed are the rights of life, liberty, security of the person, the protection of the law, freedom of conscience, of expression, assembly and association, protection for the privacy of house and other property, and, for, and from deprivation of property without compensation. Every person in Fiji is entitled to these fundamental rights and freedoms, regardless of race, sex, place of origin, political opinions, color, religion, or creed. Mr. President, I also wish to add that at this year's South Pacific Forum, which was held in the Solomon Islands, Fiji mooted the idea of an indigenous regional conference, which was well received by the Forum Island countries. 
Fiji is of the firm conviction that security and stability in the South Pacific region is related to how well we address and accommodate indigenous interest, particularly as an overwhelming majority of the island states are largely indigenous in character. To conclude, Mr. President, I wish to stress that Fiji accords considerable importance to the International Year of the World's Indigenous People. This is why we supported General Assembly Resolution 46 stroke 128 last year, proclaiming this important event. We believe doing this will provide the world community a good opportunity to step up its efforts to improve the, li to improve the living conditions of the indigenous peoples and collectively help resolve the problems they face and also at the same time ensure that their rights are protected. We hope that the program of activities envisaged for the year would lead to a global concern for the life and welfare of the indigenous peoples. Much can be gained by the full involvement in all facets of planning, implementation and evaluation of programs of activities for the year. Moreover, indigenous peoples should be involved in all aspects of the decisions concerning the activities of the year that will be affecting them. All in all, the success of the year will depend on the funds that member states will be willing to allocate for the year. We hope that all countries will contribute generously to this worthy cause that this world body is beginning to embark upon. We in Fiji see the in International Year for the World's Indigenous People as a major step forward in the cause of the Indigenous Peoples of the world. Indeed, we believe that such a move will have a more positive and prag pragmatic impact on developmental objectives in the developing world. While at the international scene, it can only strengthen and promote a deeper, humane and sensitive understanding of indigenous life, which in turn will enrich our common humanity. Thank you very much. Agradezco su exposición. I thank the distinguished representative of Fiji for her.